My name is Brie Walker, Brie Logan on all platforms. And if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts and you're not subscribed, psh, what you're doing, baby, hit that subscribe button. And if you're listening to us on Spotify, give us a follow. We have a great guest on today's episode. She is an accountant by day, a rainbow cupcake baker and TikToker by night. You can find her on Amanda Hawkins, uh, Amanda underscore Hawkins 22 on TikTok. Uh, please welcome Amanda Hawkins. Hi. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being on here. So you have Amanda underscore Hawkins 22. Is 22 like a favorite number or was it just like a random thing you had to put for TikTok? It was, I think I had to put it because somebody definitely had my name. Okay. But that was just a random, I like twos and I like fours. So okay. anything where I have to put a number, it's going to be a two or a four. I can get so. down with that. I ask because I'm what my second favorite number is 22. So I didn't know mm-hmm. if your favorite number is 22. And I was like, oh my God. It's any version of two and four. So okay. kind of, yes. I can get down with that. Awesome. I normally don't have any problems because my first name is just spelled super weird. So nobody has it. Yeah, but- you got that. The H in there. I got the weird H. I don't know what my parents were thinking. I think they wanted me to have a difficult childhood and adulthood where nobody mm-hmm. could remember my name and nobody could pronounce it. And I couldn't have anything in the gift shop because it didn't have my name on it. Oh, sounds very traumatic. It made me feel special and entitled like a millennial mm-hmm. that I am. Of course. <laughs> so with everything always being bigger in Texas, like what? Like what's being gay like there is like the hate bigger is the pride bigger (laughs) like are they both bigger I need to know this Mm. well so I love being gay in Dallas because like I live in Oak Lawn which is the gayborhood of Dallas sweet so I walk outside there's pride flags everywhere they just painted rainbow crosswalks so being gay in Dallas love it um outside of Dallas Definitely the hate is bigger depending (laughs) on where you go. Like I spent, um, I went to college in Lubbock, which is just like a middle of nowhere, West Texas town. Um, And it's very, very conservative. And I wasn't out in college, but I would not have felt welcome at all being out there. So yeah. So I think the hate is kind of bigger some places. Oh. Um, but Dallas itself, I think it's a nice little haven. And so is Austin. Austin is great for the gays as well. I feel like all the big cities do a pretty decent job of stuff like that. And I like how they all have gayborhoods. Like even Ohio, who, mm-hmm. I mean, in Cincinnati, there's no real gayborhood, but like in Columbus there is. And so there's like this huge conglomerate of gay people that live there. So, yeah. you know, we, we, we've created our own little little cultures is that how is the gay scene like is like tell me about it a little bit well we do have a lesbian bar we and do. I was very shocked to hear that there are so many other like big cities that don't have one at all and I was shocked or they like they had some but they closed down I think it was like San Francisco used to have a wow. bunch of lesbian bars and then now there's like barely any or something and then there was another city I can't remember but also didn't have really any lesbian bar but we have a we have one token lesbian bar so we only have one you know it's all right but (laughs) it's just it's just you see the same people every day and then you're like oh okay well there's my ex there's you know there's a girl that I talked to on tinder and (laughs) there's my other ex so it's it's pretty small but at least we've got one at least we've got one lesbian bar and we got a bunch of other just gay bars that's good. I feel like I saw a documentary where there were less and less, and and I don't even know if there is any, if there are any gay bars in San Francisco, even though that's literally like the gay capital. Yeah. And there used to be a lot, and I guess it's just because if you think about the statistics of it, like you know, you have maybe seven to ten percent of people that are gay, and then you have even a smaller incremental percent of women, you know, mm-hmm. queer women. So like the margin for business might be a little bit lower, even, even in areas where there's a high concentration of gay people. Yeah. Um, which sucks. And I don't know, I don't know if it's like, there's just more community in other areas, like online and things like that. So people aren't physically going to those places as much as they were originally. Yeah. There's so many that just end up, they had lesbian bars and they ended up shutting down because I guess it was just, you know, we've got a tiny little market. Mm -hmm. It's not that many of us. 
I'm just no, sad. There isn't, which is what I want to get into because a lot of your content you post is talking just like shitting on dating apps, which I love. I think it's so funny. And like, is it worse in person at the one lesbian bar that you see all your, all the people at and your exes and shit? Or is it worse on like Tinder and Bumble and like Hinge? Uh, I did say that my, my brand is shitting on dating apps. <laughs> you did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, gosh, I think it's worse. Maybe it's probably worse online probably. I mean, cause you get so many of those like couples. Mm-hmm. There's so many couples on like Tinder and Bumble and Hinge. Um, and you don't thankfully get those, you know, when you go to the, the lesbian bar, thankfully they're not, you know, out recruiting there. It's just like online, I wonder if they're but too it is <laughs> maybe, I, I hope so. I don't know if they'd be, you know, super welcomed there. Yeah. But dating, okay. it's rough, especially because I'm a super, super picky person yeah. and we already have like the teensiest, like tiniest dating pool. And then yes. when you throw in being incredibly picky, it just is like, okay, so in the city of like a million people, I've got like three options. Cool. <laughs> so it is so difficult to find someone, but at least, that. you know, at the gay bars, you're not going to get those people looking for a third at least so you weed those people out yeah I feel like you won't get the unicorn hunters they're going to be too scared to go into lesbian bars they they want to experiment but not to the degree of like actually getting to know the culture and like you know yeah. getting bit by a butch lesbian mm-hmm. and actually going in there to like recruit <laughs> yeah find that third yeah I mean hats off if they do like good for you you guys are on the hunt yeah. you'll you'll find you'll find someone you know more power to you but I just always wish there was a setting on the dating apps. You could just be like, no couples. Yeah, that weed them all great. out. That would be really great. I had this no, video no. idea about, have you seen that? Uh, it was TikTok of this woman who, um, she was rating all the fish in like men's Tinder pictures. Yes, yes. And I was like, I kind of want to do that, but for the couples on that I find on Tinder. Yes. Trying you- to figure out like a way to do that. But I didn't want to be mean about it because you could say like, a rude thing about like a fish but it was like I don't want it to be like mean like ooh, this guy is fat and ugly or something like that but it had to be like you know a funny road so I've got that you know I have a bunch of I screenshotted a bunch of the couples so I was just trying to find a way to to make a video out of that I definitely think you'd be able to do it I mean like when they do the fish videos they're yeah she's rating the fish but she's basically rating like the dude and why he would take a picture with such a small fish like why would you take a picture of this like there is a little bit in there of being like why the fuck did you take a picture of like a fish that's like this big Um, this is two inches long yeah exactly so I feel like you could find something in those pictures to roast about that has nothing to do with like their body image yeah shit that that people could like you could get canceled for because like we're on thin thin ice here yeah, don't want to be canceled here, but I want just like a fun roast of like, oh, I'm so tired of seeing y'all. I did want to know because you post a lot of stuff about like the dating pool and how small it is and you make them so funny. Like, have you had any specific like, cr- like cringy, like embarrassing experiences on there that just made you hate it? I mean, I just in general have a very love hate relationship with dating apps because it's really my only way of finding people I don't know how many people have actually gone on dates with that I met in a normal setting yeah not online most of the people that I meet or end up dating or going on dates with I met online so it's kind of a love-hate relationship because like I need it but also like I hate it at the same time um it's so hard to find someone and then there's just so many instances where like you finally but I'm so picky so I finally find someone and I'm like yes and they start talking and then like, you know, you end up like getting ghosted or like she gets back with the next or something like that. So mm. I've had a lot of those experiences for sure. You had like the, the getting back with an ex stuff? There have been too many that just kind of drop off the face of the earth. And then you just see a picture of them on Instagram. And you're like, oh, you got back with that ex. That's why you stopped talking to me. <laughs> that makes Shit. sense. 
I just, I hear it so much in the community. I just, I've never done it and I've never like experienced it before. I did when I had dated men though, but not with, Mm -hmm. not with. Like gotten back together with them? Yeah. Like where they, they were like not over their ex or they realized they were still in love with their ex or whatever. And that, Mm -hmm. I I wish I would have been a little more hurt by it, but I wasn't. Yeah. (laughs) Well, yeah, I was just like. Oh, I was hurt, like, in a, like, a, just a person, like, disrespected kind yeah. of way, but I got over it pretty easily. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it happens a few too many times, and so does the, the ghosting. I've had a few of those. Ghosting is a weird thing, because, like, I, I have some thoughts on ghosting. I don't know okay. if you agree with me fully or not, but I watched, there's this, well, there's this Instagram account called Chicks, and... I was like scrolling past and there was a video of this girl talking about ghosting and how shitty it is. And I had some thoughts on it and here are my thoughts. I think that if you're talking to somebody, you have been on dates with them, you've had sex with them, either regardless if you're emotionally involved or not. And if, even if it's been like two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, like or two months and you don't hear from someone and they are not telling you like they're just either they don't message you back or they say that they're busy when they not when they're not they don't text you as much as they used to like all of the clear indicators that like somebody is like done with you not interested but they don't fucking tell you so that's the problem that I have I don't have necessarily a huge problem with like if you've just been texting on Tinder and then like just nothing, I don't have a huge issue with that. But when you put in the investment of like seeing each other, yeah, sex one another, like like um, being emotionally involved in any capacity, which there's always a capacity with women, even in the emotionally unavailable women. Like there is like there's just some sort of thing, and there's this connection, regardless if you are casual and you say you're casual or you're like not going anywhere. Like, and you get ghosted or you basically like, I have a problem with that because I think it's super shitty. It's super offensive. And it's, I feel like these people who do this are like entitled and they hate confrontation and they just think you're going to figure it out and just like stop like messing with them. And that's the, that that's the part that I don't like. So that's, yeah, that's my take on that. (laughs) No, no, I completely agree. Cause like I've done the whole like you know, we were talking on, you know, Tinder and then, you know, I don't end up, I'm pretty bad about that sometimes. Me too. Um, and, and just something happens, I get busy or I stop talk, or I start talking to somebody else and then stop talking to you. But like when you actually get invested and you're like going on dates and yeah, if you're like sleeping with them, you have that like emotional bond, something is happening between you other than just like, you're just texting and you haven't even met face to face. Like I don't count that as ghosting, but yeah, once you yeah. get, like, those dates and those, those more feelings involved, then it's, like, just, like, just say, just say you're not interested. So. I don't even need anything crazy. I just need a text that says, hey, I don't want to see you anymore. Yeah. And then I'll be, like, okay, cool. Like, have, have a nice life. Not in a sarcastic way. I just be, like, yeah, have a nice life. And then, yeah. you know. It maybe... doesn't even need to be, like, a specific reason. No, you like, don't just have a, a reason. I'm not interested anymore. Yeah let's just be friends instead or something like that. So that, yeah, yeah, I completely agree with that. And I, and that's the part that like really gets me because it's like a disrespectful thing because this happened to me back in like, I don't know, March, like during quarantine. And like, it it was the dumbest thing ever because we were very casual and I, it would have been so easy just to say, hey, I don't want to do this anymore or like whatever your reason was. I don't like you. I don't want to see you. You smell. I don't fucking know. But, you know, like, you have more, you have more fingers than you need to be. I don't fucking, I don't know. But whatever your reason It's probably the finger thing. It was the finger. (laughs) I have all the same fingers. You have the extra one. Yeah. I mean, I have two different thumbs. Maybe that was it. I don't know. It's probably it. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) For sure. And it it triggered me because I was like, I... (laughs) She didn't just ghost me. She unfollowed me from all social media oh, platforms no. <laughs> for no reason whatsoever. She really, really ghosted. It was weird. Yeah. It was so weird. And like, it, I, I, like, I had to take a look and be like, did I do something? Like, was I, did I do something toxic? Was I mm-hmm. asshole? Like, and I came to the conclusion that I was not. I was a very yeah. normal human being who had boundaries and was like, hey, I want this to be casual that's what it's going to be right now, you know, it is mm-hmm. what it is. 
And like when she stopped texting me, I was like, that's fine. And then I would ask her to hang out and she'd be like, I'm painting. I'm with my roommates. And I'm like, okay, like, cool. And she just like wouldn't text me. So I was like, hey, like, are we still cool? Like, do you just want to be friends? Like what's going on? And she goes, she was like, why did you ask that? Like, wh- like what's, what's making you ask these questions? And I was like, well, cause you're not doing the things you used to do anymore. Um, mm-hmm. And a couple of days went by and I went to check her Finsta because it was, there's something funny on it. And I wanted to show my friend and I couldn't get on her Finsta. And I was like, oh, oh no. I was like, oh, that's really interesting. I can't get on her Finsta. So let me see if she like still follows me on anything else. And I checked and she didn't follow me on Instagram and she didn't follow me on TikTok. Mm-hmm. She deliberately unfollowed me for everything. And I was like, I was like, what did I do to deserve that? Yeah. Um, and I, and I remember just thinking like, again, like I was like, did I do something wrong to her? Like, was it, was it like, a I, like, did I do something? And, and, uh, and I, I, I didn't think that I did anything. It was just like, it could have just ended very easily. But this is the, this is the thing that I have. If when I texted her and I was like, Hey, why did you unfollow me from everything? She was like, are you trying to play mind games with me? And I was like, no, not playing mind games with you. <laughs> um, just asking you a straightforward question. Um, and she was like, yeah, I didn't think that I had to tell you because you made it very clear you wanted things to be casual. And I was like, yeah, because I was communicating effectively. Um, it, <laughs> I, it was it was like, I, it was very like childish and I did not see that coming. And I was like, okay, like that kind of hurt my feelings. And, you know, I thought we were cool and I that could have, you know, gone on really good terms but it didn't like hope you have a really good mm-hmm. life. Like I was just like, oh, fuck, like I guess I dodged a bullet there. But um yeah, I I was super weird because if you're don't really care that much, I don't know why you would deliberately unfollow people. Um, yeah. When I have casual things that end, I don't del- unfollow people and like yeah, be I'm like still weird friends about with them. It. You yeah. Just like you just like st- yeah. It, it was the weirdest thing ever. So yeah, the ghosting thing, that was the only time that I had been like semi ghosted. And it, it was just like this, it was very like entitled and like very disrespectful. And I, that's yeah. why I, now it's I a have, respect thing for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. The first girl that I ever talked to, like I came out, I went on Tinder. It was like the next day I matched with this girl and like in classic, I was just like, I felt head over heels for this girl like very much like a lesbian like falling in love on the first date kind of thing Uh and I was like she's absolutely like perfect this is like this is like I felt all those feelings that like oh this is what I was supposed to be feeling like when I was dating guys this is I didn't feel it then and now I do and I was so excited and then she ghosted me and I was devastated (laughs) oh that was a rough that hurts for me it was rough because that was my first experience in, in lesbian dating and it did not go well. What do you think happened? Like, did you kind of replay it in your mind and like kind of analyze? Because I do that. I analyze everything just to see like where I fit in into it. I overanalyzed till I couldn't overanalyze anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm assuming it was, you know, I also was, I mean, I was a baby gay. And, you know, not everybody wants to date somebody who doesn't have experience dating with women before. And, like, that's valid. But, I don't know, she never said that, but that could definitely be a reason for it. Just not wanting to just go down that road of, you know, being someone's, you know, first relationship or anything like that. So, maybe that was why. Maybe I came on too strong. Because that's also definitely possible. (laughs) Because I was just like, oh, it was just one of those, like, you know, just feeling all those feelings that, like, you haven't felt, you know, because you were dating guys for so many years before that. I feel like it's just Pandora's box opens up when somebody comes out and, like, falls in love for the first time. It is. It's very intense. It's very crazy. And it's, um, and I talk about this on some of the other episodes, but like, cause if you feel like you're kind of going through the motions and it's kind of like subpar until you actually come out, then like all of that stuff that you would have done, the timeline is now like mm-hmm. transitioned. So like these teenage love kind of things I feel like happen 
in your 20s or 30, whenever you come out. Um, and it, it can cause you to have these like intense feelings and like it's, yeah, it's, it's super crazy. But I will say, like I've heard of that, of people not wanting to date people who are just out because of that thing. Um, yeah. Wanting to just have at least one girlfriend under their belt and not wanting to like date someone who hasn't had a girlfriend yet. I've, I've, I've heard that with some older um, lesbians that I know. And I didn't, when they had told me that, I was like, nah, this was in my first relationship <laughs> with mm -hmm. a girl who was also in her first relationship. And I was like, no, that doesn't make a difference. Like love is love. Like if you fall in love with someone and I still agree with that to a certain extent, but now after having that first relationship and then having subsequent things, I definitely can understand like the apprehensiveness that comes with that. Yeah. Cause I mean, you learn so much, I think. And also your first like real relationship that when you're actually dating the gender that you actually want to date, I yeah. think you learn so much about yourself and how those relationships are working that, you know, when you haven't had that experience before, it can kind of make things difficult if you want to date somebody who hasn't gone through that yet. I agree. Okay. So in another video you do, you have like these personalities that you do. So you have like a brain, the brain, the anxiety and the heart, and they're talking to each other in situations of like dating and other things like that. Um, how did you kind of come about the idea of doing those videos and like incorporating, you know, like anxiety and stuff like that into it? Well, so I watched, um, there's a, uh, juggling the Jenkins on Facebook. I watched a video of her. She did, uh, it was parts of her personality talking to each other. So she had um, her brain, her depression, her anxiety, I think insomnia popped up. Like there's a bunch of different aspects of her personality that were talking to each other. And I was thinking about different skip videos and something about that came to mind. And I was like, that could be like a really good video. And I had just gone through a breakup. And so I was like, why don't I film like a, what is the parts of my personality doing when I just get, uh, like when a relationship ends. So um, I filmed that. I never posted it. Um, cause I had, you know, just gone through the breakup. So I didn't want, if my ex saw it, I didn't want her to think that I was just like, you know, trying to make, make a lighthearted video over a breakup or something like that. Um, so I didn't post it. Um, and then I waited a few weeks and then I, I didn't officially get ghosted cause it was just somebody just, we were just texting. Um, and then she stopped responding, but um, I was like, wait a second, that could be a really good video. Like I could take this and run with it. So I was like, how would I do, you know, the parts of my personality, but after the girl that I really am interested in just stops talking to us. Um, so I wanted to feature obviously my brain, um, my heart, cause I wanted to like fake cry in it. <laughs> and then I did my anxiety because I, I have always struggled with anxiety and I felt anxiety is a very much a, a relatable character. Um, cause even if you don't have, you know, an, an anxiety disorder, like everybody always relates to being anxious and, you know, the anxiety you feel going out on a date or like stalking your ex or something like that. So I found like figured anxiety was a little bit more relatable. Like I have a video it's in my drafts right now, but I wanted to kind of feature depression as well because depression is something that I struggle with way more than I actually struggle with anxiety. So um, I have one where, you know, depression kind of pops up as kind of a guest star, um, <laughs> but I don't know if she'll be a reoccurring one because if you try to, you know, personifying depression, you know, as a character, she's not that funny. Um, <laughs> the anxiety is a lot more funny and a little bit more like, funny and relatable. Um, but yeah, so that video came about, um, and I did my anxiety brain and heart talking to each other about, you know, being really upset about a girl stop talking to us and how, you know, we're going to die alone essentially. <laughs> so that's where that came about. And then I did another one. My favorite, I think my favorite video that I've ever posted was the stalking your ex one. And it was another heart brain anxiety about mm -hmm. trying to figure out like who, my ex was talking to. So those are one of my favorite videos to film. 
it's funny because we all do that. That's why they're so fucking relatable. Like we all stalk, whether it's our crushes, yes. our exes, like our exes, exes, our exes, you know, mm-hmm. people that they're with now. Like it, <laughs> like it, that's why it's so funny. And it's not even for like the, the, you know, the, the women that are labeled, you know, crazy or things like that. It's all, all people. Yeah. Do. All people will stalk their exes. And also when it comes to like an anxiety piece, you know, anxiety is super common. So is depression, Mm -hmm. but like they're very common in the LGBTQ plus community, regretfully. Very. Very regretfully so because all the shit we have to go through. So it's Mm -hmm. so relatable and it's so much so that it's like an actual, just like, it's just a personality trait. You're like, hey, just want to let you know, got a lot of emotional baggage, got some anxiety, (laughs) got some depression that makes uh, guest appearances uh, a couple times in the year. Um, yeah, I, uh, I was talking to somebody, and this was a couple months ago, and she is also gay, and she said that she doesn't have, you know, she's one of the lucky ones that doesn't have, like, anxiety or depression, and I thought she was just this rare, rare, like, alien unicorn, and I'm like, how do you live? Like, you're gay, and you don't have any sort of mental disorder? Like, I don't understand. It's just so amazing. (laughs) No, I, one of my best friends, my, my best gay friend, um, she, we grew up together and she never had any mental health issues. Even when she came out, she only had like one little blip with like a, an ex, but like, she's Mm -hmm. always been so hardy. And I was always like, fuck you, bitch. Like what, why did you get to have that the life? (laughs) Brag a little more. But uh, no, I really like that because I also struggle with anxiety and I've had a few depressive, depressive episodes tied in there for a good measure mm-hmm. when I just can't take it anymore. My anxiety goes up and then it just bloop, goes back mm-hmm. down. So I definitely relate to that. Um, but I, I do love the anxiety part and <laughs> I don't know. I think the, I just think it's so fucking funny. Like the heart part when they just like they're just like all in. There's like no thought whatsoever. Like they're full mm-hmm. muscle head. They'll just fucking jump off a cliff. Like they'll do whatever. Fly across the world, move, get engaged after six weeks. Like they'll do it. Oh, it's such a typical, like the typical lesbian fashion. Like that's, that's hard. <laughs> and I feel like it's hard to, to, like you said, date with the pool being a lot smaller and then having to juggle all the parts of our own personalities. Um, Have you used TikTok as a dating app yet? Because I've heard it's the new thing. Um, So I haven't, but I I have, um, there have been some people that I matched with on like Tinder and Bumble who have said like, oh, like you came up on my for you page or like, Oh, Hey, that's weird. I follow you on TikTok. So not necessarily from TikTok, but they had seen me on there before. Yeah. Um, so I haven't, I don't think I've slid into to many people's TikTok DMS, but I might have to start. It's cuffing season. Apparently it is. It is cuffing season. Mm-hmm. I've seen so many like TikTokers that are coupling up from all parts of the world. I don't know. I don't know why, because I don't know, mate, we're getting out of quarantine and we're not quite in cuffing, like fall season. Well, I guess that's maybe yeah. straight cuffing season. I don't know. Maybe it's because like, of it's like Corona and just messed everything up. So now cuffing season just came a few months earlier, maybe. Corona Instead cuffing of the season? fall? Maybe. I don't know. But I have made some, I've had made some really good friends so far from TikTok. Me too. I met up with a few of like the Ohio like gay TikTokers. I met up mm-hmm. with a few of them um, last weekend and we're meeting up again this this weekend. So that's been super freaking cool. Like to be able just to meet with not just like other queer people, but like other creators where we just like have fun, like make stuff. Yeah. Shit. We haven't made any videos or anything yet, but like we, it's just been fun. Like it's been super cool. I'm actually flying to Colorado in like two weeks to meet somebody that you know we became friends through TikTok so that's amazing that's super cool so another thing I wanted to talk about is this uh, Miss Cat situation and for those of you 
like who are listening and don't know what's going on. Basically, this TikToker, Miss Cat, she does a lot of talking personality videos, just like Amanda. Um, and she blew up. She has like half a million followers. But there's been debate on if Amanda copied and plagiarized her content or whatever. And like comments blew up in one of her videos, like talking shit about Amanda. And she was like almost canceled, basically. So tell me a little bit about that. <laughs> My first controversy. <laughs> I feel like you're, it's, it's so funny because I feel like you're not the type of person to be controversial in any way, shape, or form. Like, you seem pretty straight-laced. So, like, when I saw that, I was yeah. like, Jesus Christ, they're coming <laughs> for her. I, yeah, I wasn't really expecting that either. But, um, yeah, so it happened, um, I was seeing some comments on some of those anxiety brain heart videos, um, and somebody had said, you know, you need to credit the original owner of this um who was uh miss cat on tiktok and i was like oh okay well i actually got my inspiration from juggling the jenkins she was doing some of these pet types of videos um on facebook a few years ago and they were not having it and then there was i think there was like three three or so people who were just like coming at me in the comment section of this video saying that you know that i was being like unoriginal and i was like plagiarizing and stealing content and this isn't even like funny and you know try to be like more original instead of recreating and stealing someone's content and i was like whoa hold up and so i tried to you know you know defend myself in the comments but you only get like you can only say like two sentences before it like kicks you off it's mm -hmm. such a small little comment section or you know word limit on there so i was like you know what I'm a video about this um, and I blame it on me being a Hufflepuff who just needs this justice. And I just, I hate when people have kind of a, a negative opinion, I guess, about my character, I guess. Cause you know, the whole like stealing or plagiarizing, you know, it's not like a, if they had just said like, oh, this isn't funny. Like well, that has nothing to do with my character. That's just a, yeah. a personal preference on what you think is funny. But if, you know, people are thinking that I'm like trying to rip somebody off or like s steal something like that's more like, you know, my character being in question. So I wanted to do a video and I was like, can I prove this? So I went back to the video editing app that I have and I did have, you know, the video that I, that I never posted about, you know, uh, breaking up, um, going through a breakup and the parts of my personality talking to each other. And that was, um, filmed, I think it was like filmed sometime in April. And I looked at Miss Kat's videos and, um, her first one was a few weeks after that. So then I was like, aha, I can actually prove it. So like I messaged her on Instagram and like told her like, Hey, like I'm not trying to steal your content or anything. So, and she was really nice about it. And she was just like, yeah, just like tag me in any future ones. So anybody, you know, doesn't, you know, get angry and think you're stealing anything. And I was like, that's fine. That's fine. I'll do that. So that was my first controversy. It's crazy. You literally almost got canceled and it, you, had done nothing wrong, A, and B, you did the the idea first based on inspiration from another <laughs> type of content. And three, do I have three? Is this the third one? TikTok is based on trending fucking content. So if there's yeah. something that's going well, a type of content that's being made or editing style or a sound or whatever the fuck it is, it's it's in its nature to tr like copy it because it's trending. So you copy something mm -hmm. that's trending. If you like something, you see it, you do it. Similarly to clothes and and whatever the fuck celebrities do, everybody else you know does it. When I saw that, I was like, oh my fucking god! Like she didn't even need to justify it because this is how yeah this is how the the whole thing works. And I will say like I you like I'll do an inspo if it's something directly like related to someone else's, it's not a trend. If it's a trend, mm -hmm. then it doesn't matter. But if it's something like that's direct and you weren't even doing the, the same, like you weren't saying the same exact thing or having the same exact parts of your personalities, like it, you were making it gay. Like it, there were so many different things that you did that was unique that like you did not even need to do anything about it. And like, I saw Alexis, Leanna like came. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I love her. She was on my last podcast episode and she was like mm -hmm. defending you and like there were people know, defending so you, nice. people coming at you. I was like, oh my God, so much tea in, in the comments section. Yeah. 
Yeah, people were still, I was, I didn't know if anybody was even going to comment on that video because for most people, it wasn't, you know, concerning them. It was more a direct response to just the couple people in that one comment um, section on that video. But there's so many nice people um, who also pointed out that it's like, this has been done. Like Thomas Sanders does, had done videos on YouTube about like his parts of his personality talking to each other like years ago too. And then someone was like, technically all you guys are ripping off inside out. And it was like, technically true. Yeah. So it was like, you know, we're all kind of doing similar content and it's just, you know, I think there's enough room for, for all of us out there. And obviously you want to, you know, give credit where credit is due, but I mean, a lot of times it's just like you're, you know, there's trends, there's, you know, I know I'm not the first person to think about something. Like I've seen videos that are, you know, kind of similar to mine and it's not like a, oh, they stole from me. It's more of a, oh, they had a similar idea. Like, I like what they've done with it or something. Like yeah. That. So, I mean, it's all about like sharing content and using people's audios and following trends and dance trends. Like, it's all about just kind of taking something and then making it your own. Yeah. And let's say for, you know, shits and giggles, you were copying and you plagiarized everything. Why would she give a fuck with her half a million followers <laughs> yeah. about I you don't think doing she cares. stuff? <laughs> And also, it's, like, the highest form of flattery. Like, I've had people, like, like plagiarize my shit and copy it. <clears throat> Not a lot, but I love it. Like, I don't care. Like, I think it's great. I'm like, you like my stuff enough to, like, do it? Yeah. Like, that's super cool. Like, and most of the time, if you're the original person, you're going to get the most notoriety and the views and the likes and all of that anyway. So if anyone does anything different, like, it's not like they're going to surpass you in any way. And even, yeah. I don't know, even if they do, like, I'm just not – worried about it the only thing that I would be mad at is if like a celebrity or somebody with like millions of followers like copy my yeah and then they took it and didn't at me in it I'm like you at least could have thrown me a few thousand followers like come on yeah (laughs) yeah I think she's doing just fine with her half a million followers yeah and you know my videos are gay anyway so it's not like we have the same you know direct fan base anyway yeah exactly and everything is a remix music is a remix Mm -hmm. like movies are a remix like there, there's so many different things that just stem from something else and you tweak it and make it a little bit better or different or for the times or like for queer people. Like it, it's, it's nothing is original. Nothing is ever mm-hmm. original in yeah. general and definitely not on TikTok. Guys, if you are loving this episode and getting value out of it, please drop us a review on Apple Podcasts. This helps us get discovered by more queer listeners just like you so we can get this in the ears of people who are looking for some cool, relatable, gay content. All right, questions for the queers. This is the part of the podcast where we try to answer your questions on life, love, happiness, etc. that we probably have no business trying to answer. Take it away. First question was, uh, someone asked, why did you buy the Dobby mask? It was slightly terrifying, but funny. I don't know if you saw that video. I did. <laughs> I, okay. I bought this mask of Dobby from Harry Potter. Um, I bought it off of Amazon and it was, I had a, this um, bet with a friend of mine and it, we were both going to s- post on our Instagrams for people to, to poll on what's better, Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings. And I said, everyone's going to say Harry Potter. And she said, everyone's going to say Lord of the Rings. So we had to make it a bet. So we, and so I had to pick out something for her to like, I wanted something for her to do or wear or something if she loses. So I was looking on Amazon and I found this terrifying, horribly awful mask and I almost bought it. So she would have to wear it if she lost. Um, But some of the reviews were like, you know, this is a child's mask. It's not going to fit a normal human head. And so I was like, okay, well, I won't get it for the bet, but I have a really tiny head. So I'll just buy it for myself instead because I could not <laughs> stop thinking about it. And so I, I ordered it. I got it like the next day. Thank you to Amazon. And I made a video of it. And then everybody in the comments were like, they were like, this is disturbing. This is the worst thing I've ever seen. <laughs> like, this is going to give me nightmares. Please don't do this again. <laughs> so I'm thinking about making it like, um, like a whole series, <laughs> like, a, like a Dobby does. Dobby walks her dog. Dobby makes some cupcakes. Because <laughs> it's just a terrifying mask. And I, it's one of my favorite things I've ever purchased. <laughs> and if my voice wasn't so muffled, I'd probably be, like, wearing it right now. <laughs> That's absolutely I that hilarious. I, if you showed up to this with the Dobby mask, I would have been, like, <laughs> I would have I died. I would have fucking died. 
Oh, yeah, I FaceTimed my sister and her husband, and I didn't tell them anything. I just randomly FaceTimed them, and they opened up the FaceTime, and it's just me, and I'm just staring at them in the dobby mask. It was probably scarring for them as well, but yeah, I love that mask. That's absolutely It's great hilarious. and terrifying, but that was my first question. <laughs> and next question, um, is it hard to date via COVID? So I don't know about you, but I, like, i just ended a relationship like right when kind of quarantine happened so I wasn't really dating for a little bit of quarantine and then after once I started getting on the apps a little bit I had like a few FaceTime dates but I mean now in Texas I mean everything's kind of open so dating is more normal now because you know restaurants are kind of open you know we could go to like I don't know go to parks and stuff like that um so right now it's not that difficult. And so I didn't really have that whole experience because, you know, I had just ended a relationship. I don't know how dating has been for you in quarantine. I feel the same way. I went through a breakup with a serious relationship and I, it was like in mid January. So I had maybe like two ish months um, before quarantine hit. And so I had only kind of was really hanging out with like one person and then once COVID hit it was a lot of park dates like I Mm -hmm. went to so many fucking park dates and I went to so many different parks I visited all the parks in the area (laughs) not just for dates but just in general just to get out Mm -hmm. of the fucking house so yeah I did that I didn't really do a lot of like FaceTime and stuff like that but I have been doing that lately just because of just distance and Mm -hmm. and stuff like that um but yeah it's definitely the FaceTime dates are interesting it's interesting to get used to it because I've never I've never done anything like that before yeah I kind of liked it because I did a um a FaceTime first and then ended up meeting up with somebody at a park and I kind of liked it just getting to know them a little bit and it just seemed like the pressure was kind of off when you just do something so casual, like a FaceTime for like your first unofficial date. And then you go on like an, a, an official date and then you're like, you know, you kind of know them a little bit more. And so you kind of get those little like jitters out of the way, I guess. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I kind of like that method. Maybe I'll keep doing that. Yeah. Oh, you could make a a video about that, about like anxiety, you know, your whole personalities and like mm-hmm. uh and fa- like doing something and comparing to like a FaceTime date to a date in person, like that would be funny because it would be super relatable because like a lot of people are doing FaceTime stuff right now. Yeah. Heart, brain, anxiety, COVID edition. Yes. <laughs> Quarantine dating edition. <laughs> Seriously. I feel, I don't know. I'm such an in-person person. Like I like to talk. I don't really like, I, I mean, I do text, obviously everyone texts, but like I'd mm-hmm. rather talk in person if we're spending quality time. I'd rather um, be in person and stuff like that. And so like, it was the first time I'd ever done any dating like that. And I, I don't know, I'm getting more used to it now, but yeah, I will agree. Like it is very casual. Like there isn't that jitters of being in person because I don't know if anything goes wrong. You could just be like, (laughs) fucking click it. (laughs) Sorry. I can't hear you. (laughs) Yeah. I'm going through a tunnel. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I can see you sitting on your couch. You're not going through a tunnel. Uh, next question, somebody asks, um, where do you get your ideas for your TikToks? Um, this cat. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so I, for me, it comes, most of my ideas come kind of at like 3 a.m. when I can't sleep because I sometimes have a really terrible sleep schedule. So it it's just when I'm 3 a.m. and my mind's just like running and then I'm like oh yeah that's kind of a good idea um or they're like random like shower thoughts or yep they just you know come from inspiration I did a couple like lesbian dating game shows ideas and those came I was watching SNL and they were doing you know they have all those dating game show skits and I was like oh how could I turn that and then make that gay I was like I want to do a lesbian version of one um and like I was um another one of my videos that I posted this week um it was a video where I like snap and then things turn gay Um, yeah and so that one came from I was watching this video on TikTok and it was do you know those glasses that people can wear 
that are colorblind and then they can see colors for the first time. Yes. And I was like, what if you had glasses that made everything gay? Ooh. But then I couldn't figure out how to like film that because you'd have to like put on the glasses and then do some sort of transition. And I was like, mm-hmm. I film alone. So I was like, this might get difficult. So I was like, I could just snap. I have magic snapping fingers and then things turn gay. So just kind of watching other people's videos and kind of seeing like, how can I make that gay? Or just, just random ideas that I have in the middle of the night. And yep. some of them are not good. Some of them never see the light of day. <laughs> they st- or they stay in the drafts because you don't know if you... They stay in the drafts. Like I had yeah. one idea that in the middle of the night, I was like, this is the funniest thing I have ever thought of. <laughs> and then I go to film it and I'm like, I'm never going to post this. <laughs> this is not that funny. <laughs> No, I feel the yeah. same way. Or like I think something's really funny and it flops and I'm like, ah, shit. Like all of the ones that I work so hard on are the ones that flop and the ones that yes. don't flop for me are like my six second videos where like my It's a yes. Remix videos or like I was filming a roofing house and I made a below her mouth yeah. comment and did not think anything of it and it just fucking took off. Yeah, like you're, um, one of those has like four million views or so. one of your it's a remix ones yeah That's crazy my last one with the birdhouse my grandpa made this yeah. fucking birdhouse and it's literally like I'm I'm seeing it right now um in the mm-hmm. yard it, it was this huge fucking thing and he and like I've built stuff with my grandpa before in the past and like I've done wood shop and things um very very lesbian stereotype of me um but he, he was in a few of my other videos that went viral, and I thought, oh, this is going to be the one because mm-hmm. it's about lesbians building things. And yeah. so my grandpa likes to do monologues at the very beginning because he doesn't realize that we're only doing a six-second thing. So I got mm-hmm. I, I, I to let him talk, and, which is always funny. So I, rec- I make sure to record it, and like I posted it the other day on my story because like, hey, he's so fucking funny. And then yeah. I'll have my dad be like, okay, now we're, now we're filming for, <laughs> for TikTok. Um, but yeah, that one went the most viral that I've ever yeah. had. And I've had a few that have hit a million with just the, it's a remix shit. Um, yeah. But this one was like a million overnight. And it's that's weird. Incredible. Because, yeah. yeah. It's incredible because it hit straight TikTok. And that's when I realized mm-hmm. it because I see my followers go down in the my men to women ratio like goes down yeah like a percent and a percent which I hate because I'm like oh, fuck like I don't want these fucking straight dudes on my like why do they want to follow me um but it's cool because it's so relatable I think straight people like my videos more than gay people do for it's a remix because they think it's so mm-hmm. wholesome and it's just so mm-hmm. amazing and it's it's just not that perverted gay shit that they see all the time it's wholesome shit you know it's not so twisted twisted gay stuff yeah like this is so nice it's not overly sexualized like pride and the bdsm community oh you know it's like whatever the fuck Mm -hmm. stereotype they want to bring at us um which it's fine like if i'm helping that you know that world assimilate i'm cool with it but yeah it's It's interesting. You and your grandpa, you do what you can for the community. I try. I try. I had my grandpa on a lot. No, keep going. um, I was talking about this today with somebody because my little, the snapping video that I did, my, I showed it to my friend before I posted it and she was like, that's going to go viral. Like, it's going to be the best video. Like, this is your best word. She's like, you're going to get like at least 200,000 views like overnight, like for sure. And then I posted it and it got nowhere near that. And then I posted something yesterday a dumb video. It's been in my drafts for over a month. I didn't know if I was even going to post it. I almost just deleted it. <clears throat> and it's just me. I just, I bought this rainbow doormat and I'm just walking up to my door and I have a voiceover that's like, oh, look at this like gay ass homo. I wonder who lives here. And then I, you know, unlock the door because it's me. I'm the gay ass homo. And I think right now it is my most viewed video. It is. And I, was I like, saw it blow up. How? I was like, holy shit. You, you, po- you posted it like yesterday and it completely went nuts. Yeah. It's crazy. And I was like, what? So it's just, yeah. So I got, you know, you can't really focus on, you know, what you think is going to do well. Cause I have no idea. Like, I really think like, oh, that snapping one. I, it was, I thought that one was way more creative and it took way more time to film. Yeah. And then it's just like the random things that you don't think are going to take off. Sometimes those take off and you're like, really? I guess I didn't have to work that hard. I think, and I think maybe like when I was thinking about it, like because you didn't have to think that hard, it's more authentic. 
and it's just off the cuff and you're just like, oh yeah, I'm going to shoot this. Like that's when I had my first viral video, which was the roofing one. And that was a while, like a couple months ago, I was just walking through the neighborhood and I saw people on the roof and I was like, oh, cause I had just watched below her mouth, Mm -hmm. terrible gay movie, but also very hot. Mm -hmm. So there's my take on that. But I was watching, I was just, you know, walking or whatever. And I was like, oh, that's so funny. And like, what if I was looking for Dallas on the roof? And it was just mm-hmm. a six second video of me being like, asking for a friend, like, where's Dallas? And people fucking went crazy <laughs> yeah. for it. And were du- duetting me, like, people on the roof that were like, hey, like, I'm Dallas or whatever. I, like, did a part two because everyone and their mom was getting their roofs done during quarantine. Mm-hmm. So I just found another house and did a part two of looking for, for Dallas. I have a question. Um, how do you learn to be comfortable in your own skin and embrace your true self? This is a harder, question. deeper question. Yeah, good question. I um, like it. We get deep on this podcast, Amanda. Yeah. All right, let's get deep right now. When I was closeted, I was very, very, you know, I was very unhappy. I was not being my, you know, authentic self. I was trying to be somebody that, you know, I thought I could play that little straight role. So I wasn't being true to myself or authentic to myself. And I was just desperately unhappy because it just kind of breeds unhappiness when you can't be your true self. Um, But I think surrounding yourself with people who are kind of out and proud can help make that transition easier. Because sometimes when you surround yourself with like people who are like confident and they are, you know, I'm out and proud and, you know, I don't care what people think, you can kind of like absorb that little, you know, confidence a little bit. So I think that can help, help just surrounding you with, who you want to kind of emulate as far as, you know, confidence and embracing themselves. Yeah. And I'll second that, especially if like, let's say you don't have any queer people physically in the vicinity. What I would do is check and see if you guys have any LGBTQ plus centers that you could Mm -hmm. find um, a little bit of solace in. If you don't have one, like Cincinnati doesn't have one. They only have places like in your colleges so you have to be you know a student uh, so when I was looking for those kind of people since I, I had one queer friend which was great but she lived in a uh, a couple hours away and you know was in a relationship and you know had a life and stuff like that so like she could always be there for me over text but you know there wasn't any you know like hey like let's go out to gay bars like let's you know whatever. yeah um And I really turned to, because I didn't have centers around me, I really turned to YouTubers and, um, Mm -hmm. and I turned to Buzzfeed, which was really interesting. There is a whole, there's a whole LGBTQ plus Buzzfeed. And this was back in 2015 when I started watching this stuff and this was before I was out, but like, and while I was doing gay quizzes and other, you know, fun shit to figure out your identity, um, and I started watching these queer creators that it they wasn't always the content wasn't always queer related, but they had queer characters, so they had representation, and that mm-hmm. was just nice to see representation, as well as stuff that was just for gay people. Um, when I was figuring it out, and then you know when I came out to myself, like really just looking for queer movies and books and TV shows. And YouTubers who were living that day-to-day life and sharing their vulnerable experiences, those were my biggest things to kind of cultivate that community before I had queer friends. And now I do have queer friends, Mm -hmm. honestly, because of TikTok. Like, I had only had that one queer friend, and then I had friends of an ex, but obviously that doesn't last when you wake up. But yeah, I mean, TikTok's been a huge thing for me where I've been able to meet other gay creators in real life, like in Ohio, um, and to be a part of that. So yeah, that would be kind of my advice there. And to be yeah. more active, active in kind of finding that if that's what you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's so many people just online if you don't have anybody near you. Um, so many people just, you know, just being able to watch other people like that was such a big thing for me seeing other people on you know the YouTube and now you've got you know got TikTok seeing other all these other people who you know live their life the same way and and feel the same way that you do it helps you kind of feel not so like that you're like different or strange or something and that helps you know get that you know sense of self and, and comfortable with yourself when you realize that you know you're not alone and we're all here in a big supportive community yes So you have a side business where you just exclusively bake cupcakes. Tell me about it. 
So I started baking back in college, just around the holiday time, because I wanted to just make some, you know, cookies, brownies, that kind of stuff for my roommates and my friends. And I realized I really like baking. And I kind of also realized after that, that cupcakes are kind of my thing. Like cupcakes were my specialty. It was the thing that I, you know, was best at. And I really, really just love making cupcakes. So that kind of grew from there and I would always, you know, make cupcakes for friends and I would always bring them into work and just kind of experiment with them. And a few years ago, I had a friend say, you know, you need to make like an Instagram for, you know, cupcakes and, you know, market. This is like a business. So I created Bake It Off Cupcakes, which was a nod to Taylor Swift's Shake It Off because Taylor Swift is my lord and my savior. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so Bake It Off Cupcakes was born and then um, made an Instagram page for it. And I, most of my orders are like, you know, friends or friends of friends, but I do it more as a hobby. Um, I think one of these days when work slows down, I'm going to devote a little bit more time and make it more of a, more of a official side business. Um, but right now it's mostly, you know, friends and friends of friends in you know, the Dallas area. Um, but I love experimenting with you know, cupcake flavors and designs. And I do little photo shoots for all of my cupcakes. So I love like the photography aspect of it. So I have these, I stage these little photo shoots for all the <laughs> cupcakes that I make and then put them on my page. Listeners, if you're in the Dallas area, Amanda has a cupcake business and she literally is making pride cupcakes. So yeah. go out and get yourself some cupcakes from her. Yes, all different kinds of cupcakes. I'll make anything you want. <laughs> I love how you called yourself Taylor Swift. Would you consider yourself the lesbian Taylor Swift? Oh, I mean, I don't have any sort of singing talent. So that might knock me a point, but, and she's also like seven feet tall and I'm five two. <laughs> so I'd be a very, very knockoff gay version of Taylor Swift. <laughs> but I would be honored to be the gay Taylor Swift. I think I just needed a little bit more musical skills I think I get that I get that well you're substituting musical skills for baking and so I feel like that's okay true that's true you should change your username instead of Amanda underscore Hawkins 22 just put the gay Taylor Swift exactly I think that will eventually get her attention <laughs> that's all I want out of life and then I could just stop from there like I achieved everything if I get Taylor Swift's attention oh completely so this is a lightning round I'm gonna ask Amanda, some questions really, really fast. Are you ready? Yes, I think so. Cake or cookies? Cookies. Tex-Mex or barbecue? Tex-Mex. Dog or cat? Dog. Big spoon or little spoon? I think both, but I'm pretty much always the little spoon. Single, talking, or taken? Taken. Ooh. Flannels or Hawaiian shirts? Flannels. Last song you listen to on repeat? A song called Vicious by, I think her name's Tate McRae. Love it. Giving presents or getting presents? Giving. I'm a really good gift giver. First celebrity you had a crush on? I think Leonardo DiCaprio in Titanic. Oh. Pretty man. He is. I feel like he I could just be like a tomboy lesbian or like a butch yeah. lesbian. All right. Well, Amanda, thank you so much for being on this podcast. If you want to check out more about Amanda, you can find her on TikTok at Amanda underscore Hawkins 22, unless she changes it to the gay Taylor Swift. Um, and as always, you can find me on all platforms at Brie Logan. If you enjoyed this episode, please drop us a rating on Apple Podcasts. Leave us a little written review. Helps us get discovered by more queer people just like you. That is it for this episode, my queers. Thank you for listening and subscribing. If you're not subscribed on Apple Podcasts, hit that subscribe button and give us a follow on Spotify. Be you, be queer, stay safe, and we will see you on the next episode.